Good morning and a very warm welcome to our online service of morning prayer on this Advent Sunday, the beginning of the new church year. As it is Advent Sunday, we will light the first of our candles on our Advent wreath, which Shirley will now do. So as Shirley lights the candle, let us say this prayer together. Heavenly Father, as we begin this Advent, give light to our eyes and peace to our hearts. May the Lord find us watching and waiting in joy when he comes. Amen. Amen. We will now sing our opening hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Beloved, we are come together in the presence of Almighty God and of the whole company of heaven to offer unto him through our Lord Jesus Christ our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to make confession of our sins, to pray as well for others as for ourselves, that we may know more truly the greatness of God's love and show forth in our lives the fruits of his grace and to ask on behalf of all men such things as their well-being doth require. Wherefore, let us kneel in silence, and remember God's presence with us now. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. 
we have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to us, your faithful people, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve thee with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Let us say the night a together. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory to be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We will now say together verses 5 to 10 of Psalm 146. Blessed are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the foreigner and sustains the fatherless and the widow, but he frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever. Your God, O Zion, 
for all generations. Praise, Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We will now have our Old Testament reading from Elizabeth. We say together the Te Deum. We praise Thee, O God, we acknowledge Thee to be the Lord. All the earth that worship Thee, the Father everlasting. To Thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee, cherubim and seraphim, continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The Holy Church throughout all the world does acknowledge thee, the Father of an infinite majesty, thy honourable, true and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ, thou art the everlasting Son of the Father, when thou lookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hast overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thy heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name, ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted, let me never be confounded. We will now listen to our New Testament reading from Simon. Hear the Gospel of our Lord according to Mark. In those days, straight after that time of suffering, the sun will become dark and the moon will no longer shine. The stars will fall with the powers in the sky will be shaken. Then the Son of Man will be seen coming in the clouds of great power and glory. He will send his angels to gather his chosen ones from all over the world. Jesus continued, learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branches sprout and start putting out leaves, you know summer is near. So when you see all these things happening, you will know that the time has almost come. You can be sure that some of the people of this generation will still be alive when this still happens. The sky and the earth will not last forever, but my words will. No one knows the day or time. The angels in heaven don't know and the Son himself doesn't know. Only the Father knows, so watch out and be ready. You don't know when the time will come. It is like what happens when a man goes away for a while and places his servants in charge of everything. 
He tells each of them what to do and he orders the guard to keep alert. So be alert. You don't know when the master of the house will come back. It could be in the evening or at midnight or before dawn or in the morning. But if he comes suddenly, don't let him find you asleep. I tell you everything, sorry, I tell you everyone, just what I told you. Be alert. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Let us say the Jubilate together. Oh, be joyful in the Lord, all ye hands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Oh, go your way to his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. Testament reading is Isaiah 64, reading from verses 1 to 9. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you, as when the fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil. Come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down, and the mountains trembled before you. Since ancient times no one has heard, nor ear perceived, nor eye has seen any God besides you, who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continued to sin against them, you were angry. How then can we be saved? All of us have become like one who is unclean. And all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf. And like the wind, our sins sweep us away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and made us waste away because of our sins. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure, O Lord, do not remember our sins forever. O oh, look upon us, we pray, for we are all your people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with our spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. The Collect for Advent Sunday Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility, that on the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal, through him who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Collect for Peace O God, who art the author, author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Collect for Grace O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Graham will now lead us in our intercessions. Heavenly Father, as Advent begins, we think of Jesus coming into the world and we give you thanks for it. Let us never forget your tremendous gift to us and let us always appreciate it fully. We remember the work of your church in this community and we look forward to the day when we can again meet together to worship you. We give thanks for Gavin, the newly appointed Bishop of Dorchester. We ask that he will have a clear vision of you and that he will give us clear guidance. We continue to pray for the appointment of a new vicar and ask that you bring us someone who will guide us closer to you. We pray for our sister congregations in Dry Sandford and Shippen and ask that the bonds of fellowship between us will be strengthened. We live before you our village school and ask that you'll protect all its staff and children. We remember before you all who are engaged in education at this challenging time and ask that you will give them strength. We pray especially for those in senior positions of responsibility in schools, colleges and universities and ask that you will continue to give them wisdom as they seek to lead their educational communities. We pray for our nation and ask that you will guide our government as they seek to lead us through the tremendous challenges generated by COVID and the negotiations around Brexit. 
We remember all those who were suffering hardship at this time and ask that our leaders will seek to bring social justice and support for those most in need of it. We continue to lift before you all key workers and ask that their work and contribution will be fully recognised by all. We remember before you those areas of the world affected by strife and disease. We continue to pray for those countries most severely affected by the pandemic and remember those for whom tremendous difficulties have been increased by it. We pray especially for those in the refugee camps in northern Syria, where Covid is spreaded unchecked. We give thanks for the progress that scientists have made in finding a vaccine and ask that all people will benefit from it. We remember those known to us who are sick and those who care for them. We ask for your protection upon those who are in hospital at this time and that they will feel a sense of your presence with them. We remember also those who are mourning the loss of loved ones and ask that you comfort them in their time of grief. Lord, as Christmas approaches, we ask that you will give us a sense of joy and that we will rejoice in the gift of Jesus, whatever the circumstances. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Our second hymn is Hark the Glad Sound, the Saviour Comes. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. When will this all end? I just want everything to be back as it was before. Won't you just do something about this, God? This Advent, more than any other, we can identify with this cry of Isaiah in our Old Testament passage, calling upon God to break in upon the natural order and to show God's saving power. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down and the mountains would tremble before you. This part of Isaiah dates from a time when some of the Jews who'd been exiled to Babylon had been allowed to return to the ruins of Jerusalem, intending to rebuild the city and the temple. But they found rebuilding was far more difficult than they'd imagined, and found themselves surrounded and threatened by hostile neighbours. They were so discouraged that they abandoned rebuilding for several years. The Israelites' anxieties were focused on the enemies that surrounded them, Ours today refer to a whole range of threats we can't even see. 
ranging from microscopic viruses to the devastating effects that the, the pandemics had on employment and on the economy to the irreversible heating of our planet. But we and the returning Israelites share the same fear and uncertainty and feeling of helplessness. Even the very welcome of the good news about vaccine developments can only mitigate our world's pain and uncertainty. And so Isaiah called out for God to come in earth-shattering power to set the world alight and do something so that all the world would tremble before him. But then, in contemplating God's power and justice, a terrible realisation creeps up on Isaiah. Could he and could his fellow Jews themselves survive God's perfect justice? All of us have become like one who is unclean and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags, he says. How then can we be saved? But then, as he ponders further all that he knows of God's nature, he recalls God's ongoing fatherly love for his chosen people and his delight in all that he has created. Yet you, Lord, are our father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. And he appeals for God's mercy. Oh, look on us, we pray, for we are all your people. Isaiah initially called out for God to come in earth-shattering power. Later Jews expected him to come as a powerful Messiah. But this Advent, we prepare to celebrate how God showed his fatherly love for us by coming to earth as a helpless, dependent baby. God didn't come in the way anyone expected him to. Isaiah recognised that God often doesn't do what we expect. He says, you did awesome things that we did not expect. With God, we must expect the unexpected. I think that's the reason why in Mark's Gospel, Jesus tells his disciples to keep watch. We need to keep watch and be alert, to see God at work in unexpected ways and in unexpected places. It has been said that the themes of Advent are God's coming in history, in mystery and in majesty. God came in history 2,000 years ago in the person of Jesus Christ, who was born into a human family, taught his disciples, died and rose again. God comes to us in mystery today, through the work of the Holy Spirit, in the sacrament of Holy Communion, and in what we learn about God from worship, from reading the Bible, from each other, and what we learn about God from the natural world. God comes in mystery as we wonder, was that just a coincidence? In the still, small voice, the hint so slight we can't really be sure. Could God be calling me? God will come in majesty, however we understand that phrase, when ultimately the peace and justice that God intended for creation are established. During Advent, we think of God coming in history, in mystery and in majesty. Thinking back to our passage from Isaiah, we can see the contrast between Isaiah calling upon God to come down in a great conflagration and the tiny flickering flame of hope symbolised by the candle we lit at the start of our service. 
Advent is a time of waiting. As little children, we can't wait for Christmas to come. We count down the number of sleeps to when Father Christmas will arrive. We will the days away. This huge sense of anticipation and expectation generally fades with adulthood, diluted by worries about getting everything done on time or who might be offended if we make an unwise choice of where to spend Christmas. But this year, we have all experienced the yearning aspect of waiting more than ever before. We ached for the end of lockdown, for a haircut, to go shopping, to get back into church. We still yearn for an effective vaccine to be available, to be able to travel without thinking about it, to hug our family and friends. No amount of wealth or prestige can take the waiting out of our collective wanting. So much in our lives will be different from normal in this lead up to Christmas. Our comfort and joy Advent calendar asks us what brings joy today and who needs comfort today? The priest, broad, wife, writer and broadcaster Sam Wells has suggested that each day in Advent we note down one word of something good or joyful that we might not have noticed or done that day in a normal year. Or one thing we're glad we didn't have to do this year. Perhaps we could write the words down the side of the calendar. Sam Wells suggests that we might look at our list in two years' time to remind ourselves where we found joy even when life is so restricted. But I think I'm quite likely to have lost my piece of paper by the end of January. That doesn't matter. It's the act of being alert and noticing that matters. Let's say again our prayer we said when we lit the Advent candle. Heavenly Father, as we begin this Advent, give light to our eyes and peace to our hearts. May the Lord find us watching and waiting in joy when he comes. Amen. watchful and keep us faithful as we await the coming of your Son, our Lord, that, 
when he shall appear, he may not find us sleeping in sin, but active in his service and joyful in his praise. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, thanks be, to be to God. Thank you for joining us in our online service this morning. As you have probably heard, uh, the churches will be allowed to reopen from Wednesday the 2nd of December. So we will be having a 10 o'clock Holy Communion service in church on Wednesday to celebrate the reopening of the church which Stephen will be leading. It does mean that we should be able to be back in church for our Christmas services, although obviously we will still have to follow the social distancing rules and also we will have uh, the um, capacities uh, restrictions which will be in place. So we may have to uh, uh, provide tickets for some of the most popular services, but more on that nearer the time. Hopefully you would have all received a leaflet from St Peter's of all of our services planned for the Christmas period and also our countdown to Christmas advent calendar with lots of uh, activities for us all to do and consider during the next month or so and our comfort and joy leaflet. So although we will be back in church next Sunday we will also be producing an online service as it is the first Sunday in the month. In the meantime please take care and look after yourself. Thank you.